Hi everyone, it's Vanessa, long time no see. Is this a blank enough background for you? Is this enough lighting? I opened the windows and I'm filming bright and early in the morning. So I hope that this looks better. I'm taking in a lot of what you guys have been saying in the improvement survey and I will link it down again below if you haven't taken it. It's basically a Google form survey where I'm asking you things about my videos and how they look and what I talk about in my videos and ways that I can improve. So if you have a couple minutes you can fill out as much of it as you can and that would be really really helpful for me. So here we go. Here I am. Um, this is a wrap up video. I'm going to be talking about the things that I've been reading mostly at the end of 2018 and then what I've been reading in the first three or so weeks of 2019. I've been reading a lot of uh, middle grade stuff mostly for work for a program that I'm doing and then the rest I've been reading a lot of graphic novels and memoirs that have been like on my list that I haven't been getting to and now they are over do at the library so I finished them in the last couple days and I want to talk about the ones that I really really enjoyed. We are doing a program at my library and it's like a bowl style trivia where different schools compete on how much they know about a selection of books that are picked for them to read. We ask some questions about the books and then they get points based on if they get the answers right or not. So I've been reading books from that list just to familiarize myself with it. I'm only supposed to be an expert on two books and Really, I haven't finished my two books, <laughs> but I was curious about some of the other books on the list and there's some that have been on my mind to read. This was kind of just the push that I needed to finally read them. Let's talk about these five books. I'll talk about them in the order that I read them. I first read 910 by Nora Raleigh Baskin. This is a 911 story and I've never read a 911 story that's been marketed for kids and targeted for kids. And I also think this one is a little bit unique because the majority of it does not focus on the actual day of, it focuses on the couple days before 911 and the issues that four different characters are facing in those days and kind of just like how life was before that event happened and then maybe 40 or so pages of the actual day of. At times I thought that because it was so short and it's following four characters, it's hard to really get a sense of each of them and I, I definitely liked reading some characters more than others. I also thought there were some kind of moral lessons here that were really not subtle and were really kind of overt and sometimes they didn't really land for me. Like the, the author was really trying to tailor these messages and some of them felt a little bit pushed and forced. I thought it was an all right enough read. In some places it could have been executed a little bit better. The book that I read after that, which I really enjoyed, was The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Um, this is a World War II story, but not the World War II story that you would expect. It's about kids who are sent to the countryside during World War II, so when the bombing starts they are not hit with, with the bombs in London. We are following Ada and her brother and they are placed with a woman who does not have children, she doesn't have a spouse or anything. When she's dealing with a lot of grief of her own but over time she really gets to love these two kids and the story is really about found families and the importance that they can have on someone who has had such troubling childhood. Ada and her brother have been really abused by her mother. Ada was born with a club foot that was never fixed. As a result, she's kind of been sheltered her whole life. Therefore, she has a lot to learn, a lot of manners to learn, a lot of just like social situations to learn. This home that she's placed in really helps her do that. And she gets to find her own hobbies and her disability does not affect what she can do, like what hobbies she can have and what friends she can make. It's just a really, really lovely story. It's very cozy and it's one of those that's a page turner, I think. I would definitely recommend this if you're interested in middle grade stories and especially if you like historical fiction. I think this is done really really well and I would want to keep reading in this series. I thought that the ending was a little bit rushed but I think that they just want you to pick up the next book. So overall I would recommend The War That Saved My Life. I started the underneath but I didn't finish it until after I finished both Ghost and Brown Girl Dreaming but I'll talk about the underneath next. This is a Newbery honor book. It won the Newbery. <laughs> And I had a lot of problems with this book. It's sort of discussed as being a story about animals and a story that has some magical aspects to it. The way that it's really written is, is what I had most problems with. Most of the time when I was reading it, I was kind of like, what, what are you getting at? What's the point? Why are you saying this? It has that kind of poetic style that Newberries are known for and it's very circular in fashion. Uh, we don't really get answers to things and we just keep coming back to the same thing. I wasn't really caring for these characters and I didn't really root for these characters. I feel like there were these like 
messages and ideas that Kathy Apelt really wanted to come across about love and abuse and, and abandonment and I just feel like I didn't like it. <laughs> that's that's the, the truth of it is it tried to act like it had more meaning than it actually had for me. Honestly, would like to hear what kids think about this book because if I didn't enjoy and I didn't get anything from it, even with like a better understanding of like messaging in books. I wonder what kids get when they read this book. The next book that I read was Ghost and this is by Jason Reynolds. I love this book a lot. It was just so fun, so engaging, so fast-paced and it had wonderful, wonderful characters. We are following our main character Ghost, also known as Castle, how he uses running as a way to like cope with his life. He just runs from things and he ends up joining this track team and again a book about found families. He makes really close friends with the kids on his team that are newbies as well as the coach. This was fantastic on audiobook. The uh, narrator just had like a way with it. He had voices for all the different characters and they just felt so authentic because of his narration. I just loved everything about Ghost. The issues that he had as well as like the mistakes that he made during this book and how all of the bad things that he did kind of came to a solution at the end with parents there and like authority figures that are guiding him to act in a better way. I'm interested in the next book. Last but not least from the batch of middle grade books is Brown Girls Remain by Jacqueline Woodson which is a reread for me. I read this I don't think last year but I think the year before. I really enjoyed it in the same style that I enjoyed it last time. I really enjoy learning about Jacqueline Woodson and her childhood and what she's taken from where she's grown up and the people that she's been surrounded with and her family. I just think it's a, a great way to introduce readers to free verse because it's definitely like you you can understand everything that is going on and that is really helpful when you're reading something that's more poetic. I don't think I love it like five star love it but I, I think it's worth your time. Let's talk about the graphic novels. The first one that, that I want to mention is Sister BFFs which was a hilarious little comics collection from the same person that did Soppy. This one is about her sister. Just kind of like the ridiculous situations that they put themselves in and like how they taunt each other and play with each other. It's very silly. I think it's pretty relatable. It was just one where I, I giggled a lot while I was reading it and I would show parts of it to my boyfriend and tell him like that's me. It's just a funny funny lighthearted read. The next one that I want to talk about is Belonging by Nora Krug. This is a graphic memoir where Nora Krug is looking into her family's involvement with the Nazis. She is a German who moved to the US. She ended up marrying a Jewish man and she kind of just feels this guilt in her life about her family's possible involvement with the Nazis. A lot of her family is very tight-lipped and doesn't talk about what happened. So in this book she uses mixed media art and that includes photographs and her own drawings and clippings from files that she gets to kind of sift through that guilt. A lot of it felt kind of like wallowing in places. At times I thought it was a little bit hard to follow because we are following two different parts of her lineage and I couldn't really understand who was who in those situations. Of course there's not really any clear answers. It felt kind of too scattered to come to any real conclusions and that bothered me. I also thought that the book wanted to be kind of like a I'm going to reveal everything book and towards the end in the conclusions I didn't feel like anything was really revealed. It was too scattered for that I think. I expected just a little bit more because of the hype and the way that it looks. I'm, I'm kind of sad that I did enjoy it as much as I wanted to enjoy it. A great book that I read is Quiet Girl in a Noisy World. This is a mostly comics though you kind of follow a loose thread that has a main narrative of a young girl explaining to people how introverted people think and feel. I think this is just fantastic. It really spoke volumes to like my experience as an introverted person and if you're an introverted person. I'm sure you'll find aspects of that. You feel seen. I think it shows you how much mental power it takes to be talkative and friendly and in the moment with people. How sometimes that's like really sucks all of the energy out of you and all you want to do is lie down. Her love of books is also shown in this and how books just kind of transport her into this world where she feels comfortable and cozy. She talks about meeting her boyfriend and having to meet her boyfriend's family and like huge batches and how like that sucks the energy out of her as well and about her getting married how you get married as an introverted person and the situations that that brought for her as well just overall very cute it's one that i i read really quickly and when i closed it i was like i know that this is a five star read a five star read this early in the year 
very nice. Three more graphic novels. The next one that I read after that one is one I finished a couple days ago, and this is I Am Alfonso Jones, and this is by Tony Medina. This is a book that really pointedly discusses Black Lives Matter issues, focuses on Alfonso, who is killed by an off-duty security guard police officer in a department store while he's trying on a suit to go see his dad for the first time after he's been exonerated because of DNA evidence that has proven that he wasn't guilty for a crime that he's been in prison for for like 15 years. So it's a very tragic opening of, you know, this very happy moment in their family where they finally are going to be with their father and then as he is shopping for a suit to go meet his father and he is murdered. It takes on ideas about Hamlet and he kind of comes back as a ghost through the past and the present to see how people have dealt with these kinds of issues before and how his family is dealing with his death. I had some issues with this when I was reading it. Of course, I think this is such an important topic. I think this sort of thing is important for a graphic novel collection for young adults because it is very explicit about the issues and I think that's important here for teenagers to get these messages of, you know, this is what we've been dealing with and this is the way it actually is. I think what I had problems with is going through the past and the present as a ghost, as a real person, going back to his childhood when he's not a ghost. It felt a little bit all over the place at times and hard to follow. I think the illustrations might also have to do with that. There's just a lot going on in the illustrations and sometimes that could be distracting to me. Overall, I think that kids Kids need this book but at the same time I, I kind of wished it was different. I wish it was written differently and I wish that it was compiled differently artistically. Um, yesterday I finished on a sunbeam by Tilly Walden, this monster of a <laughs> graphic novel. Tilly Walden I think is an up-and-coming graphic novelist that you should know about especially for young adults. I read Spinning by her last year and I was really excited to hear about this. This is a book set in space in an undisclosed time period where we follow our main character Mia becoming part of this crew that goes out and fixes historical like locations. We also are treated to know about Mia's backstory and a person that she met while she was at boarding school, someone that she really cared for and became her girlfriend. I don't really know if I can say a lot of things happened but those two situations kind of come to a head. The story of her meeting this person five years ago and then now being with this crew and then thinking about this person that she met so long ago. There's some really really beautiful and interesting illustrations in this graphic novel. The way that it looks, the aesthetic, the way she draws structures and ships and worlds as well as how she draws young women is like on point. I love the way that it looks. I love the coloring as well where I think that she needs more work on and it's also because she's really young. I think she needs a little work on her storytelling and I think she needs work on her characters as well. We are following about six young women. I, at times I didn't really understand the motivations of each person even though it's like a 544 page graphic novel. I also sometimes found them a little bit difficult to tell apart just like their backstories except for maybe like three of them I was like sure I knew who they were talking about. The space stories are really cool and I just wish that the story lived up to the look of it. If you're someone who's looking for LGBTQ stories, this has a lot of lesbian love and with young women. Um, I think that's really important. I also love like there's like no men in the story. The main character has moms. It doesn't seem like men really even exist in the story so I thought that was also very interesting. You can see how this book keeps tilting back and forth because it's so heavy too. It's a very interesting look. It's imaginative and innovative and beautiful, striking, but I kind of wish that the story and the characters lived up to the look of it. Finally today I finished this graphic memoir which I would highly recommend. This is Becoming Unbecoming. It is by Una. This is a book that kind of converges two situations. One is Una growing up in the UK and her childhood there and facing a lot of sexual violence and abuse in her life as well as like how people thought about it and how she was put into you know therapy and how peers slut shamed her for situations that were kind of out of her control being like a 13, 14, 15 year old girl. Also pairing that with the Yorkshire Ripper who was a serial killer who killed for five years. He killed 13 women in the same area where she grew up. A lot of what she's really getting at here is how a society that in general operates on a level of misogyny and quieting women's voices and belittling women for speaking up, how that really failed both Una and failed 
all of these women in, in this area who were basically prey for this man. This man was supposedly only committing these crimes against sex workers, but of course this man is not just killing sex workers, he's killing random women as well. But because these policemen were so focused on this tunnel vision of he's only attacking prostitutes, they kind of put aside all of the information that they were getting that would lead them to this very normal family man who was committing these crimes. What she does here is basically say, listen to women. She does this through a very personal narrative of her own life, and then she also does this by interjecting historical evidence, our societal standards, and how we prosecute people who commit violence against women, aka not very well, and really ends it in a way that just gives you a nice punch in the gut and says what would have happened if all of these women were still alive. And you really get to sift and, and think about that situation and the way that she, she draws all of this out of contemplating, you know, just like all of these lives that have been lost because of violence against women. It really, really hit me and um, I think it's a great graphic memoir to pick up. Is that it? Oh, I think I have one more to thing to talk about, and this is the only, like, actual novel slash big book that I read, and it's not even really that long, um, and it's Normal People by Sally Rooney. I read this right at the end of 2018. This one I really, really enjoyed, and I think it's all to do with Sally Rooney's writing. When I was reading this book, I was completely immersed. I was so compelled to continue reading, and I would read, like, hundreds of pages at a time. I think it's entirely the way that Sally Rooney writes this book, where, like, every little piece of, you know, inanimate objects have meaning and like feelings and convey different things to the reader. Just in general, the two main characters that we're following here and they're kind of will they, won't they, you know, are they going to be together or are they going to be separated situation that they're placed in. And you get to see both of their points of view in the situation and in ways that I feel like when you read sometimes you read romance books, you're like, come on, just talk. But I feel like a lot of what's going on here with these two characters are like traumas and problems that they have faced and that's why they can't really come to terms with actually discussing their feelings and thoughts. I think the way that she wrote it made me feel for both characters very well in a way where I was rooting for both of them. It takes on the idea of millennial love really well. She's only like a couple years older than me, but I felt kind of seen in the way that people in the college interact with one another and how both characters think about each other. That's a lot of the ways that I felt like I've seen with my peers and with myself where different situations reminded me of things that I have gone through or seen my friends go through and I think that she really has her finger on the pulse so on like millennial ideas of love and like respect and belonging and society and politics. I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it especially if you want to see both the good and the bad about millennial ideas about belonging and love and our feelings about our place in the world. I have blabbered enough about the things that I've been reading lately. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye.